Um, maybe before the break, I can just say, uh, what if you go to more complex uh, probability functions? Well, then, of course, you enter quickly into situations where you cannot solve the maximum likelihood equation with pen and paper, but where you have to rely on a numerical strategy to calculate your maximum likelihood estimate. And that's exactly the purpose of the computer labs uh, next week, that we really put those likelihoods together, um, either with building our functions or by writing our own functions, and that we then do the uh, optimization with numerical routines in R, right? So that's what I'm gonna demonstrate next week. And one case or one example where that would become necessary is when you try to fit the negative binomial distribution, which is a count distribution that is using two parameters, R and beta, when you would uh, want to do that on a given sample of data, right? You could start from moment estimators where you would say, okay, using this parameterization, the mean of the negative binomial is R times beta and the variance of the negative binomial is R times beta times one plus beta. So I can put mean and variance theoretically and empirically equal to each other, and I can solve for the unknown R and beta. So that would be a moment approach to come up with a good indi indicative indication of what would be suitable values for this R and for this beta. But we know that it is more interesting to switch to MLE, to switch to maximum likelihood, because then we have the whole machinery about quantifying the uncertainty, coming up with a confidence interval, et cetera. So if we wanna do that, you would have to switch to the log likelihood, consider it as a function of two unknown parameters, beta and R, and do the optimization with numerical routines, right? So that's what I'm gonna illustrate next week. We cannot do that analytically anymore. So here you see for um, this example with the number of claims observed per year, the number of drivers who filed that number of claims per year, you can see what the Poisson model did, what the negative binomial model did. You see the maximum likelihood estimates for the unknown parameters. You see the log likelihood that we um, eventually reached, right? Um, and you could also see that under these two fitted models, what we're going to do here is calculate the expected number of observations under the fitted model that would file zero claims, that would file one claim, two claims, and so on. So it's a good thing to, to think for yourself how you, would, uh, how you would do this, how you would calculate from a calibrated Poisson model or from a calibrated negative binomial model, how would you calculate the expected number of observations, filing zero claims, filing one claim, two claims, uh, and so on. So take a moment to think about that. Let me explain it after the break. And this is also something we're going to do in the computer lab next week on an actual uh, data set. Um, so let me come back to the question that we had uh, before, before the break. So before the break, I asked you, how would you calculate the, uh, like if you look at, at the table with uh, the number of claims per year, which was like zero, one, up to, etc., six and seven plus, which was on our sheet. And then we had the uh, observations. So that is how many observations did we register for each of those number of claims as, as outcomes, right? And then I asked you, how would you do like the expected number of observations under a Poisson or under a negative binomial, which you calibrated to the sample? How would you then get the number of um, the expected number of observations in your sample under this fitted Poisson model that would report zero claims, that would report one claim, etc. Right? And we are doing this kind of table, uh, and I'm just copying a few numbers over here to, to give you a bit of a feeling, but we are often using this kind of, of, of table to check whether this uh, Poisson or whether this negative binomial is capable of reaching a good fit, achieving a good fit for the observed, uh, for the observed claim, claim data. 
So the way how I should would see it is that, for example, if you want to know how many observations or how many times would you observe outcome zero, outcome k equals zero under a fitted uh, Poisson or under a fitted frequency model. That's the question that I would like to answer, right? And in order to get that, um, to get these numbers, the way how I would frame it is I would introduce an indicator, say I, I or something, and that means for observation I. And this indicator would be equal to uh, one if the outcome on observation I is a zero and would be zero otherwise. And now, of course, if you're interested in calculating the expected number of times, you would see a different outcome. And then this indicator would uh, be defined in a different way. And what we then want to do is we want to look at the expected value of the sum of those indicator var variables over all observations in our sample. So we would be interested in, in, in calculating this, right? So under a uh, fitted Poisson model, uh, I would create these indicator variables and I would say the indicator variable is taking a value of one. If, if I see uh, an outcome of, uh, of zero, right? Um, and if I calculate this expected value, what, what I then would get is I would take the sum of the expected values of those indicators. And now, of course, the expected value of this indicator would be the probability of success. So that would be the probability to have an outcome zero in my Poisson model. So in this case, that would be the sum over i of the probability to see a zero in my calibrated Poisson model. So for instance, with the P0 in the Poisson setting, that would be the exponential of minus lambda hat in a very simple case, right? So here you see how you can calculate this expected number of zeros, of zero outcomes in your calibrated Poisson. What you need to have is the calibrated probability in your Poisson or in your negative binomial model to observe the outcome of interest, in this case, outcome zero. And then you would just take that n times, right? Because that gives you, according to this reasoning, the expected number of times that you would observe a zero outcome. And that's something you can, you can put together. And it's a very good check to compare the observed um, claim count distribution with your fitted frequency uh, distribution and to see whether you are more or less in line with your fitted model, with the observations that you actually had in your sample.